Welcome back to our pole barn build. I know our siding isn't completely done yet, but this barn was built for a purpose and we have a big one of those coming next week. So this week we're gonna go to the inside, focus on getting a couple of these stalls built in our pole barn and how we're gonna build this can be used pretty much on any pole barn for any type of room or build out you're doing inside. So I hope you guys enjoy, follow along and let's get started. So the first thing we're gonna do is run a string line from your corner post all the way across connecting the two posts that you're gonna close in. With our setup, we're spanning these two 10 foot gaps on the pole barn. So we're gonna add some support beams four feet off each of these posts right here. Now I'm just gonna mark the hole locations with my post hole diggers. I'm gonna dig like a couple inches. I do have an auger on the tractor I'm gonna use, but by starting the hole first, it kind of helps keep that auger bit in line where it should be. Now I'm going to pop a couple nails in the post and pull a couple strings. Since the telephone pole is circle, it's kind of hard to get the perfect square off that. So I'm going to measure from the back wall and I think we landed right at like 12, six. So I'm going to adjust that string right there on that pole as needed to make sure we are square. Now we have a perfect square. We're going to add one more four by four post on our 12 foot wall coming from the back of the barn to the first telephone pole. That way it has a little bit of extra support because I want to add some storage shelves to the outside of this wall as well. Now we're going to bring in the tractor auger and make this job super easy. This isn't mine personally. I borrowed this from my neighbor, but it is worth its weight in gold. Now, before I set my post in the holes, I'm gonna toss a little bit of gravel in the bottom. They say this helps with the uh, water control, the moisture in the bottom of the pole. Since this is a covered pole barn, I'm not sure if it's actually doing any good, but we're gonna do it anyway. Now we're setting our two front support beams. We have two of these 16 footers to go all the way to the top, support the header and also make our doorway. Doorway will be hinged right here. And then we have uh, two more to set. That'll create our back divider walls. Now we got it resting in position. I'm gonna tighten my string back up so I can get the position right. Once it is positioned where I want it on the string, we'll try and hold that bottom position and level the top. And we're gonna add right at a full bag of concrete to each hole. That's really close. So we'll get it packed down a little bit. All of our posts are concrete in and level. Now, while these set up, I'm gonna go ahead and nail up some girts or some veneer nailers for the inside of the boards. Now, the interior veneer wood is gonna be nailed to some vertical two by fours in between our posts. Our main nailing points are gonna be the post on the corners and the, the end walls. We're gonna split the difference every four feet and throw up a two by four. This is pretty much gonna act as our nailing girt on the inside. Now you gotta remember with these plans being built to specs, all your exterior footings and posts are already set and made to hold the weight of the structure. That's how it's designed. So we really don't have to overthink this part. We're really just building an interior veneer wall. We got this back wall completed and it's going pretty smooth. Before we get too far ahead, let's get into the sponsor of today's video. This video is sponsored by EcoFlow and this is their new Delta II Max, a 2400 watt gas free solar generator, ideal for home backup and replacing any 2000 watt gas power generators. Gas generators create many physical and environmental issues, including they're horribly noisy. The Delta II Max solves these issues and achieving the same results as any 2000 watt gas power generator. And this is the perfect clean, quiet 2400 watt replacement. This solar generator has no fumes because it's powered by the sun. There's no noise, no maintenance, and it powers up to 99% of your home appliances. They say that the noise is up to 30 decimals, but the only thing I can hear is the electronic noise after you push the buttons. And the best part is it has a 2400 watt AC output. And the Delta II Max has the world's fastest recharging speed, AC plus solar combined for a zero to 80% in only 43 minutes. That's four times faster than the industry standard.
One of the upgrades and new features about the Delta II Max is this dual input solar charging. Connect up to two of EcoFlow's 400 watt solar panels and have a full recharge in 2.3 hours. If that's not enough power for you, they have dual expandable ports of up to 6KW. This is their plug and play backup home battery system for up to 6KW, 120 volts with a transfer switch. Not only does it operate my most power hungry saw, with the EcoFlow app, I can customize my energy management, including all your outputs, your inputs for your charging, your percent that the battery is charged, and my favorite feature is the on and off button right here from your phone for all your outlets so you can take control of your power. And also, this is the lightest 2400 watt solar generator in the industry by 16.3 pounds, and it has a 10 year lifespan. So we're ditching the gas and going solar with all our power tools on all the future projects. And it has been great so far, already saving money. Remember my discount code will be right here in the screen for a 5% off for you guys. Also, all the product information will be in the description below. Now let's get back to this build. So these back one by 12s overlap this four by six right here and covered up our nailing point for the boards running behind me. So I'm just gonna add another pressure treated two by four right here. We'll face nail this all the way down and then that'll give us pretty much a girt or another nailing point for the other boards. We got the two back walls ran. Now, because I'm using telephone poles, this is where it's gonna get a little tricky. There is no nailing point on the telephone pole because it's round. Previous episodes, we had to fight that a little bit with the top header and recess it or saddle it or trim it up in areas where it needed to be so the header set true and straight. We're gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna use this two by four pressure treated for our nailer. And I'm gonna screw this to the pole at our point so the boards We'll have something to nail on on this side. I'll nail this here, make it level, and then we'll also give it something to nail to on this side and run the boards on the inside. Now my first nail on the bottom part is gonna be right in line where my string nail was. So I'm gonna put one nail in here, and then we'll take our level, straighten it out, see where she's landing, and then we'll use some longer screws to tie it in. Man, that's so pretty. Let's wrap this corner and we're gonna start laying out the front. These pieces are pretty straightforward as well. The only thing we gotta make a decision on is how we wanna end it. I'm gonna end it butted up against the edge of my post right here and I'll run a two by four nailer on the inside. That way when I trim out these posts for the opening, it won't interfere with that trim. What do you think, you got it? We got majority of the boards up around the stalls. Now we're gonna start on the gates. We're gonna keep these super simple. I'm gonna use four uh, pieces of the boards. I'm gonna continue the horizontal look and then we'll probably do some crosses, some X braces on the gate. Maybe do a little bit of decorative look on there, but keep it simple. I'm gonna use this flat surface on the table because I know this stuff is green anyway. So when it dries out, it probably will not hold the same shape very well. there's the basic layout this will be the bottom that'll be the top something like this is about what we're shooting for just a quick sketch i know we gotta stay right at 47 wide for our hinge and our latch mechanism but that's about our only parameters so hopefully we can throw these together pretty quickly
So here's the mocked up gate all finished. I cut two of these, pretty much made a cut list, cut all the pieces, and now I'm gonna mock up the hinges. Um, I've made this mistake several times before. You go and make a big gate and then you lay your hinges out and your hinge has no backer. It's just landing in a weird spot. So always wanna mock your hinges up and make sure that you're gonna hit where you want. And these are gonna work perfectly. I severely underestimated how heavy this guy is. It's got some weight to it. It's not a huge deal, but the hinges I got for this thing, we might have to upgrade. We'll put some ring shank nails in there and some screws. Whoa. Oh Lord. There they are. Came out pretty good. So we got a temporary threshold down here at the bottom. I leveled it out with some dirt to try and get the right height so the bottom of the door isn't hitting the gravel. So we're gonna stand this thing up and see how she fits. The only thing left to do is add our hinges. The biggest piece of advice I got when you're mounting hinges, use the biggest screws you can fit through the holes. Even if you have to drill these out a little bigger to have bigger screws on there, usually it's well worth it. All right, moment of truth. <laughs> this thing is heavy. It's got some weight. There we go. Wow. It feels a lot lighter when it's swinging. All right. I think that's gonna work. We got one down. Let's get the other one installed the same way. We will almost have a functioning horse stall. Things are heavy. All right. Wow. You got it? Mm -hmm. Whoa, bro. Can't move it, bro. Last door is mounted. Moment of truth. Another one. Perfect swing. It's the last morning working on the stalls and they came out perfect. The last thing we have to add is latches for the doors. That completes another build. Thank you guys for watching. Remember this type of construction in a pole barn could be used for any type of room, attack room, office, storage, whatever you wanted. All we would really have to do is add a floor and continue the walls all the way up and you would have a sealed off space in your pole barn. We'll see you next week for another project.